Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at renal dialysis. We're going to talk about renal failure being the cause or for the need for renal dialysis. We're going to look at what dialysis is, the dialysate used in dialysis, uh, the two different types of dialysis being hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis, and kidney transplant, which eventually, hopefully, uh, is the solution to that renal failure. Uh, so firstly, renal, the word renal means the kidneys or relating to the kidneys. Uh, so renal failure is when the kidneys stop working. And this can happen suddenly, uh, or we say acutely, uh, where something like uh, infection or trauma, uh, or it could happen uh, over time as they get worse and worse uh, through uh, high blood pressure or diabetes. Uh, once those kidneys stop working, they're no longer able to remove the waste products from the blood. And therefore, we need an artificial process that is able to remove these waste products. And in particular, we're talking about urea as well as excess salts in the blood. There are two types of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. But basically, both of these work the same way. You have a semi-permeable membrane, and that semi-permeable membrane separates the blood, which has the waste products, and the dialysate being a liquid that's used in dialysis that does not have the waste products in it. And this allows diffusion across that semi-permeable membrane of the water and the solutes or the salts and urea that you want to get rid of. As I said earlier, both these processes use a liquid called dialysate. And this liquid mimics the chemical composition of the blood uh, but it doesn't have those waste products in it. So if the blood has a certain amount of uh, sugar in it, the glucose, it'll have around the same amount of sugar that the blood's supposed to have. It'll have the same amount of salts, uh, such as sodium chloride, that the uh, blood is supposed to have in it. Uh, and what this means is that it allows for diffusion of those things that they don't want in the blood. So for example, urea, uh, because there's no... Uh, urea in the dialysate, it very quickly and easily uh, diffuses across that semi-permeable membrane. Glucose, on the other hand, uh, is found on both sides of the semi-permeable membrane, both in the dialysate and the blood, so therefore there's going to be no net movement unless the uh, levels in the blood are somewhat out. Uh, salts, and it depends on the salts, I've cheated by grouping them together, but some of those salts do build up in the blood, so they do need to be removed, uh, and some of them don't. Uh, so what it does is it has, the dialysate has all the different salts that are required in the blood in it in different concentrations. So if the blood has too much of that particular salt, it will diffuse that salt out, um, but if it's got the right amount, there'll be no net movement. So get, let's get into the differences between those two different forms of dialysis. Uh, so hemodialysis, firstly, and heme means relating to blood. Uh, so is where blood is removed from the patient and put through a dialysis machine. And in particular, there's an artificial membrane in that machine called a dialyzer. So on, in that dialyzer, on one side, you've got the uh, dialysate, and on the other side, you've got the blood, and there's a semi-permeable membrane separating them. Uh, this then takes out the unwanted salts and waste products and that uh, clean blood or filtered blood is then put back into the body. Uh, now this you need to actually have one of these dialysis machines to be able to do this. Uh, so it needs to be done in the hospital. And generally it's uh, effective enough that you can get away with doing it about three times a week and each of these three times takes three to six hours. So that's three to six hours, three times a week in the hospital, uh, which you can imagine is quite a big deal uh, and means that you can't really move far from the area that the hospital's in. On the other hand, we have peritoneal dialysis. So the peritoneal is a naturally occurring membrane uh, that surrounds the organs of the chest and abdomen. So uh, what we can do is actually use that membrane as a semi-permeable membrane. So this, in this way, what they do is they create a port in the abdomen uh, and have a soft tube there. And through that, you're able to pump uh, dialysate into the peritoneal, kind of like filling it up like a water balloon. Uh, and then it's actually, but it's contained within this peritoneal. After a few hours of sitting there, 
in the peritoneal, uh, those uh, salts and urea and waste products, they will uh, diffuse into the dialysate and then the dialysate can be drained and thrown out. Now this needs to be repeated up to 10 times a day, so it's not as effective as uh, hemodialysis. However, it is something that a patient is able to do themselves, so they are able to do this at home, particularly uh, if they're too far away from a hospital that has a renal unit. At the end of the day, both hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis are short-term solutions. Uh, it's basically just holding you over until you can get that life-saving kidney plant. In this video, we've talked about renal failure when your kidneys stop working. We've talked about dialysis being an artificial uh, short-term solution for this renal failure, using a dialysate, a liquid that mimics the chemical composition of your blood, the two types of dialysis being hemodialysis, where the blood is taken out, cleaned and returned to the body, and peritoneal dialysis, where the di uh, dialysate is put into the body uh, and then taken out when it's dirty. However, again, these are temporary measures and a kidney transplant is the only uh, permanent solution to this problem. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.